Okay, so um, I'm going to present my student Amir's work. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't come here. So he's working on an ultrasound uh, based respiratory monitoring system. And in this work, he actually uh, tried to evaluate how the system works under uh, different human body motion. So as we can uh, imagine that respiratory monitoring is a very important uh, feature for wearable because uh, breathing pattern can detect a lot of the underlying health conditions. So there are a lot of devices in the market for uh, respiratory monitoring. Uh, you probably saw a lot of this gas exchange uh, system in the hospital. Uh, people use PPG and ECG a lot for respiratory monitoring. These days also uh, strange dot sensors have been uh, used quite a lot. Uh, now a lot of these uh, current devices cannot be used in wearables because they want the person uh, is monitoring to be static. So they don't really work well under uh, uh, when the body is under motion. And that negates the um, lot of usefulness of wearables because people like to have wearables so it, they can monitor their health status uh, without really, uh, uh, I mean, uh, while they're also doing their uh, daily activities. Um, so that was kind of one of the motivation for our work is to develop a respiratory monitoring system that works uh, well under different body motions. Uh, also, uh, like when we are developing a variable system, uh, we try to uh, have uh, some features in it. One of the important things is we want it to be uh, easy to use. Uh, of course, we want it to be low power and uh, low transmission, like low, uh, it has low transmission data. Uh, we want it to be operate under different uh, like uh, human body conditions and motions. And also we want to extract as much uh, information as possible from one wearable. Now for respiratory monitoring, uh, in this work we were actually focusing on to develop the system that works under a uh, different body motion. The, there are a lot of systems as you saw uh, for respiratory monitoring. Uh, many of them are based on biological signals like uh, monitoring the impedance of the skin. Uh, a lot of them are monitoring the oxygen level in the blood, like uh, the TTG sensor. And in the gas flow system, it just monitors uh, how much uh, gas is coming out uh, uh, when you are breathing. Now, uh, while we were developing our system, we thought, why don't we look at some internal organ motion uh, while we are bathing? So there, there are some organs that actually um, have some motions when we breathe, and we wanted to monitor those, and uh, we thought we were going to use ultrasound to image those organ motions. Now, which organ we are focusing? Uh, we were actually using a diaphragm, which kind of is somewhere here. And uh, it's a muscle, and as we um, breathe in and breathe out, this muscle kind of uh, has this kind of movement. And it's easy to uh, like get a reflection of uh, uh, that without some wave from this diaphragm. So, as you know, ultrasound technique is a very common imaging technique. Uh, it's very safe, it's non-invasive and painless. Uh, there are different modes uh, for ultrasound imaging. In our work, we were using the B -mo uh, M mode. Uh, so, in the M mode, the system, uh, we have a piezo transducer and it generates some uh, signal. And then the signal goes through the medium and as it hits the interface of the organ, uh, some of the signal gets uh, reflected back. And from the time of flight of the signal and the intensity of the reflected signal, we can find the organ position. And to actually have, uh, to detect the organ motion, we use the M mode, which is basically uh, the system averages the amplitude uh, over a specific period. So the M mode is kind of a variation of the B mode that we see in the video uh, images of the ultrasound. So this is our uh, the transducer end. So we have a PZT5 transducer which is mounted on Capton. And then we place uh, the transducer in between eight and nine uh, mid auxiliary, uh, like uh, shown here. And then that, uh, that is actually where the transducer can uh, have a focus on the um, diaphragm. 
Um, the pulse pixel we were using, it has a resonant frequency around 2.2 megahertz. So this is the um, system block diagram uh, that is actually used to uh, uh, excite the transducer and get the signal back from the transducer. This is a mixed signal embedded uh, system, uh, mixed signal system, and then for the uh, for actually tra exciting the transducer, we have a high voltage pulser uh, which uh, can uh, generate a pulses between minus 20 to plus 20 volt amplitude. But in our case, we were using uh, the signal between minus 8 to plus 8 volt. Uh, so which uh, first we uh, excite the transducer for some amount of time. So that's the transmit mode. And then we switch off the transmitting mode and then the transducer starts receiving the uh, reflections back from the diaphragm. And then as the reflection comes back, uh, we pass it through uh, some amplifying state and then we send it to envelope detector. And then after we detect the envelope, we um, digitize the signal and then send it back to a computer for more processing. So when we actually breathe in or breathe out, so as the diaphragm uh, like moves like this, so when the diaphragm is like that, the signal comes back uh, right, uh, it gets reflected right from the diaphragm. So uh, we get a pattern like this. But then the diaphragm is So from uh, like the reflection, when we have a reflection and we don't have a reflection, we can actually see that when we are breathing in and when we are breathing out. So we try to um, uh, evaluate our system with uh, also a three common respiratory monitoring system with PPG, accelerometer, and gyroscope. And for the standard reference, we use the spirometer. So that's the gold standard for respiratory monitoring. So we use different kind of breathing pattern to evaluate our system and uh, try to find some figure of merit. So we try to find the true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative with uh, all these methods and try to find uh, the specificity and sensitivity of each method. So in the first, so we had six different tests and for each test we had uh, seven volunteers. So this shows the data for only one volunteer. So for the first test, we just asked the volunteer to breathe normally. So you can see that this is our, our system, the ultrasound system, and it can detect the um, spirometer signal. Uh, it follows the spirometer signal very well. And even the PPG and gyro and accelerometer uh, follow the uh, uh, spirometer very well. Uh, but in the second test, we asked the volunteer to have long inhale and exhale. So you can see our system can track it very well, whereas the PPG sensor was uh, like couldn't really track the long inhale and long exhale, whereas the gyro and accelero work fine. So you can also see that in the data that uh, the PPG sensor sensitivity uh, is low in, in test two. For test three, we asked the volunteer to do some fast breathing and then uh, followed by some slower breathing. And uh, you can see that our ultrasound sensor could track it. Did, it did miss uh, one or two uh, breathing, but overall it detected quite well, whereas the PPG sensor couldn't detect any of this uh, breathing. Uh, the axillary and gyro could actually track uh, the uh, breathing pattern. For Test four, uh, we asked the volunteer to have shallow and normal breathing. I uh, can see even in this case, the PPG sensor couldn't detect the breathing at all, whereas the gyro and accelero was working uh, quite well. And our system worked uh, well too. Uh, well, you can see some peaks are very small, but when you put it in our algorithm, it could still detect uh, those as a, a regular breathing. And then for test five, we asked the volunteer to move their hand in, uh, so put their hand in 90 degree position and then bend it in 150 degree. Um, so our sensor actually could track the breathing even in this motion very well. We couldn't get any data from the PPG sensor, so we didn't really plot it here. 
the gyro and axilla were mostly detecting the um, like the motion because it's basically the body motion. And for test six, we asked the um, volunteer to actually bend their upper part of the body to the right and left. Now, in this case, our sensor uh, couldn't detect uh, when the body was moving uh, left and right, uh, the breathing pattern. Uh, PPG sensor couldn't detect it, and the gyro and axillary was only uh, monitoring the body motion. So this is a kind of a bar chart of the sensitivity and specificity of those uh, five methods that we uh, use. So one is our sensor, actually four, because uh, the power meter is the reference. So one is our sensor, the rest three are the axillary gyro and the PPG sensor. So um, our, you can see that our sensor, the ultrasound sensor, uh, has actually pretty good sensitivity and specificity for all those um, cases. And I will explain why we couldn't see anything when we, uh, with our sensor when we moved our uh, upper body in left and right. Um, and then, so this is kind of uh, an average of all those uh, five tests for all those six volunteers. And this is another test we did where we asked the volunteer to do uh, normal breathing, longer breathing, coughing, yawning, and some uh, like some of like different kind of um, like activity. Um, so you can see that the PPG sensor uh, cannot detect some of this breathing, uh, especially like when we had a longer breathing or yawning. Uh, gyro and axillary, uh, like if it's a body motion, then instead of breathing, it basically detects the body motion. So one of the reasons that uh, we couldn't detect anything uh, while uh, we actually moved the upper part, bent the upper part of the body, is because when the upper part of the body was bent, the piezotransducer um, was, so we were putting the transducer in between two rib cages. So that it can see through, uh, because the bone has very high uh, attenuation coefficient for ultrasound. So when the signal passes through bone, it actually everything gets absorbed in the bone, so nothing actually passes through. So when we are having the upper, like bending the upper body, uh, the transducer was uh, moving, so it was actually going over a rib instead of in between two ribs, and so we couldn't get any reflected signal back. So what we are planning to do now is having uh, multiple transducers uh, like this. So we're going to have a four channel system. So if one of them, so if we have body motion, if one of them moves up, another transducer can actually see to uh, between, between the rib cages. Um, also, I could see, so right now the system we're using is quite big. Um, so we have a high voltage pulser. This is the FPGA that controls all the blocks. Um, so, and then this is the envelope detector. So this the system is quite big still. So we are also working to make it a compact system with uh, wireless communication protocol. So we can have a very small variable uh, that can be placed here. Um, so, so this work is still in a very preliminary stage. We just wanted to see how it works in the body motion. Um, so that's kind of the end of the talk. And um, thank you for listening.